Now the methods that we've just seen work equally well when we're converting rotational speeds. Now rotational speeds in engineering are often quoted in revolutions per minute. We think about the speed of the drive shaft of a car travelling typically between 2000 and 5000 RPM. But in engineering we're often required to convert that first to radians per second. Because as mentioned previously, that is the true SI unit or standard international unit of angular measure. So what we would need to do, we know how to get from revolutions to radians, and we know how to get from minutes to seconds. So we can adopt that two-step process. So if we're given a speed of 2,500 revolutions per minute, and we're going to go through a two-step process. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert that into rads per minute. And once we have that in rads per minute, we're then going to convert that to rads per second. So a two-step process. Well, the way we get from revolutions per minute to radians per minute is the same as the way we get from revolutions to radians. Because if something's travelling 2,500 revolutions every minute, then we need to times that by 2 pi in order to find out how many radians it's turning per minute. Because of this fact up here, one revolution is 2 pi radians. So in this case, 2,500 times 2 pi gives us 15708 radians per minute. But we're not finished there. If something's travelling 15,708 radians every minute, then to find out how many radians it's travelling per second, we need to divide that value by 60. Dividing by 60 in this instance gives us 261.8 radians per second. So once again, it's a two-step process. First of all, we're converting from revolutions to radians, and then we're converting from minutes to seconds. So to get from revolutions to radians, we times by 2 pi, and then to get from minutes to seconds, we divide by 60. We'll just do one more of these just to clarify these points. If we have a rotational speed of 7100 revolutions per minute, first of all, we need to times it by 2 pi. And by timesing it by 2 pi, it's going to give us the radians per minute. And in this case, that's 44,611 rads per minute. But we don't want rads per minute. We want rads per second. So what we need to do is we need to take that 44,611 and we need to divide it by 60. Now when we divide that by 60, we get... 743.5 rads per second. What we have on the screen here is the information and equation sheet for this trigonometry topic. Now you can find this on the study platform on the trigonometry topic page. What you notice at the top here is I've provided the conversion factors to get from degrees to radians and radians to degrees and they're there for your reference should you need them. But what I wanted to draw your attention to is directly beneath that we have some equations which are for converting between linear and angular motion. Now I don't want you to get hung up on the derivation of these equations. All I want to make sure is that you're able to apply these and there's a couple of key pieces of information to share with you. So if for example you wanted to calculate S which is the linear displacement at the outer edge of the circle in metres then all you would need to do is multiply the radius of the circle in metres by the angular displacement. But that must be the angular displacement in radians. Okay, so we've just seen how to convert from degrees to radians and how to convert from revolutions to radians. Providing we input the angular displacement in radians, multiplying it by the radius of the circle will give us the linear displacement in metres. Now the equation directly underneath that's for linear velocity and the principle is exactly the same. The equation is very straightforward. Linear velocity is radius times angular velocity. But again, here's the key thing. We must use the angular velocity in radians per second. Once again, you've seen how to convert from revolutions per minute to radians per second. Providing you remember to do that step first of all, 
All you then need to do is multiply by the radius to get the linear velocity. So the application is very straightforward, providing you remember to work in SI units of radians and radians per second.